species, but 2,000 animals to learn about and even come in contact with. Olivia will be giving you details about this later. Also, the many number of activities and attractions that take place just while you are there. Gondola, gondola rides and incredible dolphin shows are just two of the numerous amount of activities and attractions you can attend while visiting the Indianapolis Zoo. There are always fun, there's always a lot of fun to be had while you were there with your family or your friends. Today we are here to explain how the zoo how the zoo can be fun for the whole entire family in whatever. I will be sending it to Olivia to talk to you about the animals. Thank you. Okay, so um, for the animals and exhibits, there is five um, basically big biomes that separate all the animals into different categories. Um, the first one that you would enter into is the oceans um, biome or habitat. Um, the oceans allows guests to get up really close to all the animals that you normally wouldn't be able to, like in the wild. Um, there is a 17 foot underwater viewing dome for the dolphins that you can um, get up and see. Um, there's daily presentations for those as well. Um, it also features, when you first walk in, um, the nation's largest um, dog shark touch pool where you can get up close and touch the um, sharks and they like come up close to you. They don't bite you. Um, um, there is a bunch of different animals they have that are all in separate um, tanks. They have polar bears, moon jellyfish, seahorses, green eels, California sea lions, and the dolphins. Those are just some of them. And the next one that they have is the deserts biome. When you go into the deserts biome, it's more of like a dome and some of the um, friendlier animals are free roaming around the entire um, opening. There's like, you walk on pathways so you're not like, you can't touch them, but they are free roaming around the entire thing. Um, the other ones that aren't quite as friendly are in cages that you can walk around and see and there's information about them around their cages. Um, the deserts thing is held at a constant 85 degrees during the summer, so it never changes, and all the sunlight's coming in, so it does get kind of hot in there. And in the winter, they um, bring it down to 82 degrees, but still pretty hot. Um, the next biome that you would enter to is the plains biome, which is more of a safari type um, place. There, when you walk into the area, there it's you're surrounded by tall grasses and trees. And um, of course there's like a barrier, but there are animals in the treetops that you can look around and um, see above you. And there's also um, animals grazing everywhere that you can see. Um, some of the animals from the plains are the elephant, the zebra, cheetahs, white rhinos, giraffes, and the African lion, which are all really interesting because a lot of them are endangered and it's really cool to see some of those that they save. Um, the next biome that there is is the forest biome, which um, is a lot of, there's a lot of um, tropical and temperate forests, which are just different kinds of place, habitats that they live in. Um, there are a lot of dense canopies that um, make the path look really cool, like you're actually in the entire, like in the forest. Um, some of them are the tigers, the eagles, pandas, bears, and otters. And there's actually um, a cool video about a tiger cub that the zoo had. It was a couple years ago, but um, they didn't have any on like new ones that they had. So it's really interesting. We have Inger tigers here at the Indianapolis Zoo, and they are endangered. They estimate there's only about 400 to 500 of them left in the wild. So it's very exciting that we have a new cub. It's been 11 years um, since we've had a cub here at the Indianapolis Zoo. Zoya means life in Russian. She's four and a half months old, and she she's currently 45 to 50 pounds. She'll probably get up to about 250 pounds, which is the average size for a female adult tiger. Right now, we're seeing a lot of playful behavior. She's adapting to new environments. She's learning how to do specific tiger behaviors like stalking. Um, so we're seeing a lot of those natural behaviors. She likes to investigate everything. Right now she's out on exhibit and she's playing with everything, including a piece of bark. It's been neat to see um, Andrea 
um, being a first time mom, the fact that she's taken care of her cubs so well, um, it's really neat to see Zoya grow up and learn new things and watch her grow. So that was a little tiger cub video. Um, there's one more biome that the zoo offers. Um, it's called the flight of fancy. Um, it just means um, this just means birds, the bird biome. It, it comes. It has um, five different aviaries. So like the different like climates that the different birds need. Three of them are walk-in that you can get up close and um, there's feeding stations so you can feed the birds and they can just fly right into your hand and they'll land on your shoulders and it's really cool for like little kids and stuff that they, they, get, they get really excited about it. Um, um, there's a bunch of different kinds, a lot of colorful ones and strange ones you've probably never heard of like the hornbill, I've never heard of that one. Um, the flamingos, budger gars, um, Lori's um, crested kuas and parrots are just some of the mini birds that they have. There's over a hundred um, different birds in all five aviaries that come from all different climates. Um, they put them away in the winter um, to an off exhibit um, place because they can't, none of them stay in the cold air. Um, the flamingos and the hornbills, those two, they, they do keep those on exhibit if the weather permits, like unless there's like heavy snow or like really bad temperatures, they'll keep them out. Um, not that everybody goes to the zoo in the winter, but they do keep those ones out. And um, now that you've heard all about the animal exhibits at the zoo, Kiara's gonna tell you more about the non-animal attractions. Thank you. <coughs> I'm gonna talk to you about the attractions at the zoo. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest attractions there are the dolphin presentations, where you get to see a bunch of tricks done by the dolphins, and they get to do a many amazing flips and get to work with the staff and you get to see like the bond that's created between them and how you get to work with them. It's just a lot of fun to watch as I'll be showing a video later. Um, another one that's a new thing is the All-Star Dog Challenge, which takes place between March and October. Um, it only takes place on the days of Saturday and Sunday, but it is free with the admission of going into the zoo. Uh, the next thing is the 4D Theater, which usually lasts about 15 minutes, but it's supposed to be one of the most populous event attractions that are also left within the zoo. There is the carousel, which is also known as the merry-go-round, which everyone should know when going on there when they're younger. It's one of the biggest attractions for the younger guests that show up there. Um, another one would be a family coaster that's between the months of March and October. Um, it's the maximum speed of 21 miles per hour, and it's a height of 24 feet and 656 feet long, which should be good for people who may or may not also like coasters because it's not like your typical coaster. And another one is the Skyline Gondola, which lasts for about eight minutes. Um, it's kind of a relaxing ride. It's pretty slow. You get to see an overview of the zoo and all these amazing animals within the sky. Um, the next is the White River Function Junction train, which People usually like because it's kind of like a behind the scenes with the zoo and you get to see everything where like all the workers get to take place and how everything works the way it does, which is a lot of fun for the family to get to learn. It's like an a new adventure. Another thing is race a cheetah and it's only 50 cents where you get to see if you can outbeat a cheetah and the 50 cents goes toward the cheetah conservation fund, which helps preserve cheetah, cheetahs that are within Africa. Another final thing for an attraction would be the Splash Park, where if you're ever getting hot and it's really it's really hot on a warm day, you can just go to the pool and while relaxing, you get to also have some food and have a snack while taking a break and lounging with your friends and family. These are just a bunch of pictures from this one is the merry-go-round. The next one is the train where it goes around all of the zoo. The next one is the Cheetah, race a cheetah, which is where you're going to track and then you're next to a cheetah pit. And then the one in the lower left is the dolphin, where the dolphin take place at dolphin presentation. And then this final one on the right side is the all-star dog challenge. And then here's a presentation of the dolphin show. This is half July.
Now you know a little bit about different attractions at the zoo, I will pass it on to Kayla, who will talk to you about the holidays. <coughs> well, in addition to all the activities that you can do at the zoo year-round, the holidays offer a more and diverse experience for those looking for something new to do. In an interview with Abby Doan, I asked her about the four most popular holidays celebrated at the zoo. She is a senior trainer in the Marine Mammal Department. The first and most popular is Christmas at the zoo. Christmas at the Indianapolis Zoo is ranked fifth in the nation for light displays, according to USA Today's Best. In 1976, the Indianapolis Zoo was the first zoo to ever have a holiday light event, and ever since then, a lot of other zoos have taken apart <coughs> or taken part of their own similar traditions. <coughs> Through the interview with Abby, I was asked or I asked her about or I was able to find out that they actually start hanging the lights in preparation for December and September and work all the way through Thanksgiving. After sipping hot chocolate and walking through the thousands of light displays at the zoo, you can enjoy all the indoor exhibits, which include the dolphin show, orangutan exhibit, and many, many more. Especially for little kids, even if you want to as well, you can also get a picture with Santa. The second most popular holiday is Halloween, and it's celebration that they call Zubu, which starts at the beginning of October and goes all the way up until Halloween. Fall is one of the busiest times at the zoo because of the mild temperatures and excessive interaction with the animals. The, the, the Zubu activities are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 2 to 9 p.m. and are free admission for anyone with a zoo membership. Once you're through admissions, you will notice all the decorations and fun little family activities that you can do with <coughs> your family. Little kids are encouraged to wear their favorite costumes to help brighten the Halloween spirit as well. Fun family activities include the elephant pumpkin smash, riding the roller coaster, and even the reverse carousel. The third holiday is Easter. And because spring represents new beginnings, the zoo likes to bring out all of their baby animals for everyone to enjoy. This includes the lion cubs and the drop calves. In addition to this, there's a large zoo themed egg hunt that extends all the way to the White River Gardens throughout the entire zoo. If you collect 10 to 19 eggs, you can even receive a special prize. The last holiday is Mother's Day, and every mom will receive a mom sleeper like on the board. And it says the family can enjoy a zoo-wide mom scavenger hunt. Throughout the zoo, there are lots of different decorated park benches and backdrops where they can take, families can take pictures. In addition to all the holidays not mentioned, I'm going, or er, not mentioned, there are various group activities that people can enjoy, which include weddings, proposals, proms, bar and bat mitzvahs, overnights, and field trips. Now I'm going to hand it over to Alex for some concluding remarks. Thank you. So after hearing all this, why would you not want to go to the zoo? There are multiple activities and adventures that, that await you at the zoo, along with new memories to be made with your friends and family. The zoo is an outdoor classroom for all ages. I challenge everyone to treat themselves to a good time full of fun and relaxation at the Indianapolis Zoo today. Thank you.